the same way I know. And me, I work, my stuff, I'm proud of it. I'm really glad when it sells. Um, you know, I'm really happy to get it out of the house. Because actually, I don't put my own stuff on my own walls very often. My, mainly because it's just sort of like, well, I, later on, I could, I could have done more with that. You know? And what it is, like anything, thank goodness we have deadlines. Two weeks. And if you didn't have a deadline, well, this would take six weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, 75 weeks. I had a piece I did for my dentist. You know? I couldn't go back to the dentist for a long time because I never finished the piece. And it was done. I mean, it just, and it was good. He would have loved it as it is, but, you know, it wasn't done for me. But, you know, you know, how it goes. Um, deadlines are important. You hit them. And congratulations to all of you. Look at that. There's a whole lot of work up here. And you got this assignment two weeks ago. And I know that you didn't kind of get up and say, I just can't wait to draw bones. <laughs> you know, that's not like the first and foremost thought in your mind as far as creating art is concerned. But, of course, bones are the structure of life for the human form, and that's why we study anatomy. Um, some of these pieces, once again, have better contrast. They have great design. Um, some of the pieces, well, it's a little looser looking, and so maybe you want to tighten it up you know, or something like that. Uh, this piece is quite nice, but I think the, the drawing could be tighter. And I'm just going to kind of bop, top, step around. If I slight you, please don't feel bad. But I, I do want to also talk a little bit about anatomy in general as well as uh, we have a lovely, beautiful model to draw today, and I want to do some drawing, which is probably much more exciting than hearing me talk. Um, the middle gray values on this are very interesting and show up like from seven miles away. Now, on the other hand, possibly bones are not that color. They're kind of like either in deep shadow or something like that, and uh, they're a little on the dark side, so maybe that's going a little too far. Me. But it's always that, you know, when I talk about uh, gray tones, um, something that works nicely here is you see the highlights. There, There's many things in terms of contrast, and there's, I said the black is easy, the darkest is easy. Um, the lightest, the highlights are very important. You look, look at the person across from you, and there's a little highlight on the tip of the nose or in the eye, on the bottom lower lip. There's a little one on the upper lip. On me, you can't see it because of the ugly hair on my face. Our hair, hair, hair is wonderful. It has light and dark values and has highlights. You know? And if you get, you know, how many of you have drawn hair on a, on a person or something like that? And it kind of ends up looking like spaghetti dumped on someone's head or something. <laughs> You know, and and the, the trick to, to hair is very simple. It's really just light, dark values. And if you just get the lights about where, I mean, the darks where they belong and the highlights about where they belong, and you tell just enough, wow, that looks like hair. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do, tricks or simple things that we can do that will allow us to be uh, at least competent in our drawing, in our work. But you know, those are things. Those are things that, that do throw people on occasion. You, know, you want someone that looks like someone that has blonde hair. That looks like someone that has dark hair. There's a difference, you know. Especially if there was a reason to be specific, that a certain person, well, obviously has dark hair, and they need to you know, have that. If, if you were trying to catch the likeness or something like that, and that's possibly where my my commenting on maybe light to dark values on something are important. Highlights are good. Are very important. That one you can see it. On some of these others, um, this one here we can't see highlights because the, the all we have is line for the most part defining it. Max, is that yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so maybe we think think about those middle value things. Of course, you're trying to keep that other jack. I mean that wonderful storyboard teacher happy too. <laughs> That's a problem I know. Um, but then I'm a better teacher than he is. <laughs> or better looking, I don't know which. Um, yeah, it's it's this one could use just a little more middle value, and that's going to take a little more time. You know, sleep is not an option, folks. Although I think it is, uh, or important. Um, for a long time, I, I you know I've been really getting really lazy in my old age. I've been like, especially when we were on this last holiday, I I probably slept until like 7 o'clock most days. It's like, and I, 
know that probably seems weird to most of you. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's like sleeping way in. You know, um, uh, Quite often you get up early in the morning, grab a cup of hot chocolate or coffee or whatever, and you go, go to work for a while and then, then have breakfast after that. You get amazing stuff done in those early hours. And then go back to it, you know, religiously go back to it. Because we had, in the animation program, know you stay up very late at night and everything else like that. Uh, I can't push enough. Try to, try to say, well, you know, at a certain point, I'm going to bed. Get a little more sleep, you know, and then wake up a little earlier in the morning and try to be productive at that point. Because you might have more strength then. I know there are a lot of you that mornings, no, oh, it's not going to work. <laughs> and in, in, in the design studios and the animation studios, a lot of them don't punch clocks. Oh, quite a few of them you're going to find that you're not going to see the punch clock. You're not going to be you know, told um, you have to put in X amount of hours per se. Um, although Alan, who was here a couple weeks ago, uh, did comment and he had just signed the deal with Disney and they do punch clocks at Disney. But there are a lot of other studios I know of that they, they have their doors open around the clock because they know certain people work at 2 in the morning. Okay. They just seem to work two in the morning. So they, so they don't sit there and say, well, you know, it's 9 a.m., where is such and such? Because they know at like 2 in the afternoon you're going to waltz in, but you're not leaving until 2 or 3 in the morning before you decide to go home. But then, what kind of life is that? You know, try to, try to, the objective is A, to do what you like to do, not necessarily bones, I'm sure, but then also have a life. You know, make a good living doing what you love doing. And then actually have a family, have a life. You know, let it be the only thing you do. You know. So sleep is a good thing. Sleep is a good thing. And I'm you know, uh, a purveyor of trying to get as much beauty sleep as I can get. <laughs> um, it doesn't always work out that way. And I, I spent, and I'm a guy that also I spent a lot of days up way. I mean, how many of you have been, um, you're working away, and all of a sudden out the window you hear the birds chirping and you know and then all of a sudden the sun's coming up. Where'd the night go? You know. Done it too many times myself, you know, and so part of me is also thinking but the problem with that is is I've done that and after a, the like like two or three in the afternoon the next day you go downhill in a hurry. You know. And actually if you're driving in the car, that's a dangerous thing. I can I, I'm really good at like eleven o'clock at night driving the car. I'm fine then, but two in the afternoon for some reason, you know, after I've been up and I've spent not had enough sleep, man, I'm an I'm an eyesore on the road. I'm dangerous, you know, but at night I'm fine. Um, some probably, you know, very nice piece, but from back there it's hard to see, isn't it? It needs more strength. Okay, just a little more power. That was the one gripe. I showed you some of my pieces, and they needed more power. I needed to push the contrast a little bit more. And I even put them in frames and behind glass and everything. And I was proud of them at one time. I'm still proud of them, but, you know, I know they need more contrast. They need to, you know, if I was to publish them in a book, well, I'd be nice if they had more strength. One thing also, my background in publishing is that if something doesn't have enough contrast or power, what goes on is, and, I, and oh, something I, I did not say, as quickly as possible, I get to grade them, I get to give you the other input on all the other things that we need to do. But as quickly as you can, I digitize these. I take photographs of them, good high resolution pictures, or scan them somehow in a manner that would keep them, because they're paper. Uh, this is a lovely idea, but it's very delicate. Especially something with corners on this. I know there's yours. So I saw the, you know, the trunk paint being you know, worked on or something. Um, the problem is the edges of this thing, you're going to get caught by something else when you slide it in and out of something. <laughs> I, uh, I had a student two, three quarters ago, I can't remember when, but um